This is I Hear Things for Friday, October 22nd. Look for the flowers. It's a bonus podcast today because thanks to the vagaries of commercial air travel, I have, I have a little bonus time this morning. I'm spending part of my day today working on a new presentation for a virtual event, uh, which I'll share more about next week. But I got to be real with you. Virtual events and presentations, they're, they're a struggle for me. I don't think I'm great at them, and I know I don't, I don't enjoy them as much. I enjoy them, but I certainly don't enjoy them as much as an in-person event or conference. I'm not really what you would call a people person, so the regular slate of in-person events that I take on each year, those are my times to people. And as I'm sure you can relate, I haven't peopled much this year. Maybe you haven't either. Yesterday, I posted on Twitter, uh, just a quick tweet, that one of the best parts of my job is going to conferences, events, agencies, clients, uh, and helping to explain and contextualize our data to live humans. And that spark, when you can see that meaning has been transferred and, and people shift from comprehension to application to how they can use it, nothing's really replaced that for me, and I do miss it. And it's true, those interactions are my favorite part of the job, and they've been curtailed pretty sharply but by what I think we can all agree has been a very rude little nanoparticle. But as my wife, Tamsin, always reminds me, we must look for the flowers. Events are coming back. I have a number on the books for next year. Uh, and for one brief moment in the sun, uh, Edison's Larry Rosen calls that period the golden hour, I did get to attend a podcast movement in Nashville this year. And for 28 pretty good minutes, I got to do the thing I most love. Dan Franks and the team at Podcast Movement have graciously allowed me to share the video of that keynote this week. And I finally got a chance to watch it all over again. Uh, I'll post a link to it in the show notes. But it was definitely one of the flowers of my year, at least from a business perspective. In a previous show, I shared a lot of the data that I talked about that day. And I shared a few thoughts about making your podcast more recommendable. It cannot have escaped you, dear listener, that I've been talking about the importance of YouTube and Facebook for the future of our humble but nevertheless mighty industry for quite a while. For most of that time, the conversation's been centered on YouTube. But now that Facebook is finally starting to take podcasting seriously, I think it's time to think a bit more about how we podcasters can use Facebook. And I don't mean use as in the benign sense of utilize. I mean use as in take advantage of unfairly for personal gain. I mean, they've been doing it to us, right? First, let's remind you of the opportunity here. Facebook may or may not be where your current audience is. I mean, statistically, it probably is, but let's not quibble. But it sure as heck is where people new to podcasting can be found. For people who have yet to listen to a podcast, Facebook is by far their number one social media network. We asked in the Infinite Dial this year, what's the social media brand that you use most often? For people who are already podcast listeners, 36% will say Facebook, 20% Instagram, 11% uh, TikTok, and so on. But for those who have never listened to a podcast, 60% say Facebook. Still, I've followed a lot of the recent conversations that are on Twitter and elsewhere about the dangers of getting into bed with Facebook, and I wouldn't counsel this, because frankly, we don't know where Facebook has been. But I have seen people remind us, fairly, just exactly what Facebook has done to other aspects of the content business. When major news outlets allowed Facebook to host their content, many of them, particularly local newspapers, lost the war. Facebook is not set up to deliver eyeballs or earballs to your platform of choice. Facebook is set up to take them away from you. And let's never get that twisted. Still, Facebook remains this incredible undiscovered country for podcasters. I'm convinced of this. But I don't think we should just dump our shows onto Facebook. I mean, you can, I suppose. I just wouldn't expect too much from that. It's here that we need to consider the mindset of the Facebook user, which, by the way, is simply you and me while we are using Facebook, not this alien creature for which we have neither empathy nor insight. When you use Facebook, you're in one of a few different modalities in terms of your immediate needs. For me, I check Facebook in three different modalities. One, First thing in the morning, after I check my email and read the news, and shut up, productivity gurus. Yes, I check my email as soon as I wake up. You can make me a horrible warning in your next course. Second, and I do this a fair amount, as a digital vacation, a quick five-minute break throughout the course of my day here and there. 
And third, and this is mostly in the evening, I'll engage in more interactive uses, whether that's commenting in a favorite group or engaging in trash talk on Messenger with my fantasy football league. Now, here's what all three of those modalities have in common. I'm not looking to consume long-form content in any of them. I'm either looking for a quick break or some kind of a connection with a human, not with content. If I check Facebook at 11.20 a.m., I'm not going to read a 10,000-word Atlantic article, and I'm not going to watch a 30-minute video. I read a few posts, I like a couple, I make a comment, and then it's back to work. Do I think your podcast needs to have a presence on Facebook? I surely do. Am I going to listen to your one-hour World of Warcraft podcast when I'm checking my feed in the morning? No, I am not. So what am I saying? Well, I think Facebook is a great place for your podcast to be, but maybe not in its present form. I'm not suggesting you change your podcast, but what if you made a great 60-second version of your podcast, made sure it incorporated video and is branded with the name of your show, and that you treated this short segment as its own dog, a standalone 60-second experience of your show and not as a clip? And this is a mindset, I think. Often content creators who use Facebook for organic reach, well, they'll think about it in this way. They'll think, I'm glad you found me here, but I'd rather you find me over there. Well, the mindset I'm suggesting for you is to delete that last part and just focus on the, I'm glad you found me here. Yes, you'll have branding in your Facebook post, and yes, you'll make it easy for people to find your full-length show. But make something in that minute that requires nothing else of your audience except their enjoyment in that moment. You would be surprised what that does to your mindset. Now I'm going to tell you what you have made. You have created a compelling one-minute showcase for your talents. It cost you a bit of time, but not much money, if any. You have made a thing that you can upload to Facebook for free and that people can share and interact with in and of itself, not a clip that presumes an existing relationship, and that's key. A thing unto itself. When I was a kid, we called this an ad. Congratulations. You just broke into Facebook ads without spending money on Facebook ads. Look for the flowers. I'm Tom Webster. I'll be back next week. Thanks again for listening to I Hear Things. Next week, we're going to take a look at the audience for independent podcasts. Uh, if you like the show, please share it with others, subscribe, uh, and you can support the show and the newsletter and find all the show notes uh, and support the show at buy me a coffee slash Tom Webster. And I will thank you and drink the coffee in your name. We'll see you next week.